HSBN Live is on the air. Welcome everybody to Monsignor Pace High School. Today we have playoff regional quarterfinal action in the 5A district between Gulliver Raiders and the Monsignor Pace Spartans. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jay Habacht, along with my broadcast partner, as usual, Mr. Justin Bresner. Justin, welcome. Thanks once again, Jay. It looks like we are going to get this game in now that the rain has stopped, the weather has cleared up, and we're ready to go. No, no quarter size hail as they predicted. Yeah, and for those of you who are uh, just joining us for the first time, we did get our broadcast up at our original seven o'clock start time. It is now 8.06. And we are just about ready for first pitch. They did predict quarter size hail and 50 mile an hour winds to come through here. Fortunately, we did not get either of those. We did have a one hour lightning delay, a one hour and 20 minute lightning delay. And uh, at this point, we are about ready for action. We have gotten our broadcast equipment back up and rolling and we are now ready for action. We will give you all the particulars momentarily as we settle in, settle back in here ourselves, Justin. We had uh, quite a time getting our broadcast equipment up and down here. Yeah, we did. So taking the mound tonight from Monsignor Pace Spartans is going to be number 17 yard Donnie Carmona. Carmona 7-0 on the season, 0 0.65 ERA. He's thrown 43 innings, giving up four runs. Sounds like he might be tough to hit. And Gulliver's going to start off number 18, Daniel McAuliffe, the shortstop. He'll take a shot at getting one out of here against Carmona. McAuliffe batting 366 on the season. We are uh, catching up here to give you guys the best broadcast we can as uh, we, we had to get all of our equipment out of harm's way. We were expecting 50 mile an hour winds and quarter size hail and uh, had to get all of our equipment put away. But we are now ready for pitch number one. And here it is, and it's a foul tip and we are underway as your Donnie Carmona takes the mound, the University of Miami commit. Carmona with tremendous numbers this season. Jacob, you can put Carmona's numbers up on the screen for everybody. Your Donnie, your Donnie Carmona will be going to the University of Miami. Seven and oh, 43 innings pitched, 84 strikeouts against 23 walks, about a four to one ratio. And that one popped up out of play right over our head. Our broadcast position a, a little bit right of home plate. Yeah, it's a nice perspective here though, Jay, I gotta say. I like my view of the plate. I mean, we're missing the foul netting, of course. We walked in and said, hey, there's foul netting. We don't have to worry about that. Allen's left low in the dirt. was left up high. Big and swing and a miss. Got he him. struck him out. And we are underway here at Monsignor Pace. It is actually, Justin, a gorgeous and evening. Alejandro Castro. After very threatening weather came through here we now have a beautiful evening for you folks and you can see in our camera one and uh we'll show you jacob will give you camera one for you and this is alejandro castro the second hard baseman. to see from camera one but we do have pinks and purples in our sunset here tonight and that fastball 
up and away for ball one. We are told Carmona has wicked velocity, Justin. And we're seeing it. Big swing and a miss from Castro. Foul tip that one. Hard to get good contact on Carmona. Big swing and a miss. Another, Another swing strike. and a miss. Hard to get any contact at all on Carmona. His ball rising and tailing and almost looks like a wiffle ball out there. Hard to pick <laughs> that thing up. Remember when you threw that wiffle ball and it would rise and tail away and do all that crazy stuff? And that was, that one straight back. back. Wow. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Region Quarterfinal on HSBN Live, and we are happy to bring you tonight's game. Myself, Jay Hayback, to my broadcast partner, Justin Bresner, as we are about an hour and eight minutes past our first pitch due to a weather delay, that off-speed pitch up and out. We had about... Justin, would you say about an hour and 15 minutes of, uh, of a delay? More of a uh, scare than anything, more than... Well, the lightning <laughs> buzzer went off it did. at about 6.40, 6.45, and, uh, and just got the, we just got the all clear. So as soon as we got the all clear, Coach Duffin for Monsignor Pace um, basically told the umpires and told everybody... You know, let's get this thing going as soon as we can. And we did everything we could on our side to get the broadcast up and going. And we are so glad that we are able to bring you tonight's game. And the uh, rights to the broadcast of this region quarterfinal in the 2019 FHSAA Class 5A Baseball Championship have been granted to HSBN Live by the Florida High School Athletic Association and is intended solely for the enjoyment of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the Florida High School Athletic Association is prohibited. And Justin, I picked a good time to get that disclaimer out as we now have a full-on meeting on the pitcher's mound and, and someone being called in. It looks like Carmona is hurt, Justin. This is the one thing you don't want wow. to see. It so has to be an injury. Looks like the center fielder is coming up to pitch, Jay. Unless I'm mistaken. Pitching change for the Spartans. Now pitching number 11, Albert Hernandez. So Albert Hernandez now will come in after Justin. One batter? Yeah, one and he was working on the second batter here. Albert Hernandez. So the scoreboard not working. We will get the count for you. We believe the count was either two and two or three and two. And now we will have a, a break in the action here, Justin, because with an injury, <laughs> that pitcher will get as long to warm up as he likes. Yes, he will. I guess we can start the game at nine. <laughs> so Albert Hernandez, the center fielder, will now come in. So Jacob will give you uh, Albert Hernandez up on up on our screen. And we will give you Hernandez's stats. And and Justin, I'll be honest with you, nobody nobody wants to see a pitcher get uh, taken out in the first first batter, second batter of the game. Absolutely um, not. But if you're gonna have that happen, why not Albert Hernandez? Because Albert Hernandez, this season, we gave you the stats for Carmona, but Albert Hernandez, no slouch in his own right. A four and three record, 2.45 ERA, 33 strikeouts against 13 walks. He would be the number one on many, many teams. So uh, nothing, nothing to sneeze at with the, uh, 
with the stats for Albert Hernandez, and I'm sure, you know, he's going to have to take some time here because he wasn't ready to to pitch. He was he was out in center field, so, <laughs> the, you know, it, it's a whole different game when you're when you're ready to play center field than when you pitch. So let's talk about how these teams got here. Pace, of course, rolled through their two games, winning both to get here, beating St. Brendan 9-1 to and Imater 10-4. to Gulliver, a surprise upstart, a young team, a very young team, and a very up-and-coming team is Gulliver. Beat Keysgate in an upset. Beat them seven to two, and Justin, we did Keysgate at Marlins Park, and and Keysgate looked pretty good when we saw him. Key West then defeated Gulliver five to nothing, and that is where we sit now. We are now in the one and done mode, as uh, there is no tomorrow. The winner moves on, the loser goes home, and we can throw the records out the window, Justin. Even though we know, you know, in the in the record, uh, you know, Gulliver's record was uh, four, 4 and 15 this season, 0 oh and 4 in the district, and Monsignor Pace the exact opposite, 19 and 6 this season with an 8 and 0 oh district record. So, um, you know, in terms of the records, obviously Monsignor Pace has the edge, but in a one and done scenario, Justin, we already saw the starting pitcher go down. <laughs> you know, you never know. No, you never know. I want to say I saw Efren Bravo go over and take over in center field, but We'll get you clarification on that as soon as we can. So we'll have to get you the count, folks, as the scoreboard is not working. And Whoa. the first pitch is walk way him. up and in. So, well, if you're going to walk somebody, let it be the first pitch. <laughs> so Luis Aparicio, now the batter, and Jacob, Jacob will give you uh, his baseball card. There's the aforementioned Luis Aparicio for Gulliver having a monster season. Aparicio this season hitting 479, 594 on base percentage, 13 RBIs. Leads the team in RBIs. Good lead at first base. Oh, and that one him. hit him. So two <laughs> pitches. One walk and a hit batter. Wow. What do you know about that? That's a rough start. For the Spartans, a rough start to the game. So So now two on, one out in the top of the poor first. Poor Albert Hernandez warms up to play center field, and they say, oh, by the way, we were just kidding. You're now pitching. In a, in a regional quarterfinal playoff game a one and done win and go home not sure exactly that's exactly how it went down jay but it was weird to see carmona come out so quickly he must have had some kind of injury and now hernandez <laughs> gonna see if he can regain the strike zone He's gotta here. throw a strike here justin and no. that one is up and in three pitches from hernandez the first one walked the first battery saw because it was a three and two count. The second one hit Aparicio, and now it's no Noah fry. fry. Catcher. There's That's a in. strike, so he was able to get one over, and you can hear the, the roar of approval <laughs> from the Pace fans. Almost almost uh, as if to say, thank God. <laughs> thank God you found the strike zone. I think relief was what we heard in the fans. Tough situation, though. I got to tell you, one of the toughest we've ever seen. And there's a fastball in that one down the middle. And that one is a strike as it's fouled off. So Albert Hernandez has thrown two straight strikes. Now 
That one's left up high. A lot of tension here. And he was fry back at us. He swung back around. Hernandez, nice play by the fan. Hernandez actually looked at second base before, before going to home with that pitch. Almost Louis Tion style, Justin, where he looked at the runner and then still pitched to home. Big situation here. There's one out in the top of the first inning. The starting pitcher for Pace, Jordani Carmona. Big swing and a miss. Yeah. He struck him out. First is occupied. So it will be an out. It'll record as an out. Two outs in the inning. Big strikeout for Hernandez. Jordani Carmona started the game, struck out the first batter, McAuliffe, and then got into a three and two count on the second batter, Castro, when all of a sudden he asked the coach to come out and, and talk, and the next thing you knew, Albert Hernandez was coming in to pitch. So here's Jake Santos, Big the left swing. fielder. Here's the throw to second base. It goes into center field, and everybody stays put. Kind of tried to catch Castro sleeping over there. He was able to get back in time. So two on, two out on the top of the first for Jake Santos. A little hitch in the windup and that one's fouled back. Straight back. It looks like that's in his arsenal, Justin. He has that little hitch and giddy up to his windup. That's got to throw the hitters off, you would think. Throw off their timing. You don't know when that, <laughs> that baseball is coming to home plate at you. And not to mention, he throws pretty hard as well. Hernandez will step off the mound and reset. Someone wants to know if Jake Santos is starting for Gulliver. No, it is John Howard that will be starting for Gulliver. That's that one popped, popped up. up. The second. This is going to be a hard play, Justin, coming in and going out, and it's going to drop. Dropped. One run score will one. score for Gulliver. Gulliver takes the lead. Unbelievable. It's a blue pit for Jake Santos. Got up in the lights and it was in the Bermuda Triangle in no man's land and nobody for pace could get there in time and Gulliver <laughs> takes the lead in this game. <laughs> Wild series of events, Jay. So Will Betridge gonna step up to the plate. Batting 279 on the season, playing center field tonight. He's got some fans over here to our right. So Justin, just like with St. Thomas Aquinas back two weeks ago, <laughs> we have the upstart. That's left up high. The Gulliver Raiders have taken the lead. And Justin, in these one and done games, in these winner take all games, sometimes all it takes is a pitching performance. And we saw that. We saw that at St. Thomas Aquinas. Checks him back to first. That gets Ball away. Gets That's going to score one. Another run is going to score for Gulliver. Gulliver He's going leads to two to nothing. Here comes down to third base. Santos He's gonna going to be to safe third. at third. Wow. It's two to nothing, Gulliver. Aparicio comes around to score. Santos all the way over to third. 
This is unbelievable. Wild pitch. What a start for Gulliver. The throw got away. Aparicio scored from third and Jake Santos now is standing on third. <laughs> so Justin let's uh let's rewind for a minute two That's weeks all they've ago been playing right two weeks oh. ago <laughs> to Shamanad Madonna versus St. Thomas Aquinas and that one popped up out of play it was Miguel Rosado, the pitcher for Shamanad Madonna, that was able to tie up and turn down the offense of St. Thomas Aquinas, a very vaunted offense. And here it's Gulliver, who has only won four games all season and, and a fifth in the playoffs. And now leads pace two to nothing in an absolutely dreamlike state right now is Gulliver. And that one ripped down the left field line, but foul. foul. It was hit a ton. <laughs> Bethridge got a hold of that one. Bethridge, the center fielder. This season in 279. Justin, he does have a home run to his credit. So we know there's pop in that bat. Taking a long time is Hernandez. And now Bethridge sees the opportunity to call time and does so. That bat, Justin, when you're holding a bat that's let's say 30 ounces up high for a long time, that starts to feel like five pounds. Here's the pitch. Oh, big curveball. He struck him out. Struck out the side, does pace. But in between, Gulliver scores two runs. It is Gulliver two. <laughs> Pace, nothing. You are watching HSBN Live. Of all tournaments in the 2019 hey. Florida High School Baseball State Championships, visit FHSAA.org, the official website of the Florida High School Athletic Association. That's, that's www.fhsaa.org. And we hope you all heard that, folks, as the PA announcer talking about FHSAA and you are watching the 2019 FHSAA baseball regional quarterfinal on HSBN live and what a start do we have to this game So Jacob, why don't you uh, show the stats for uh, for both teams so everybody can see the batting stats for everybody. There you see the stats, folks, and they are, even though they are heavily weighted towards pace, the only thing right now that matters, Justin, is that scoreboard in right field, which says visitor two, home nothing. That's where we stand. Unfortunately, it doesn't say anything else. So we, no. we, do, not, <laughs> we do not have balls and strikes. We do not have outs. So, uh, folks, bear with us on the... Uh, on the strikes, balls, and outs as we will do our very best to bring that to you. So Edinson Renteria will be the batter. His father, of course, the cousin of Edgar Renteria. Edgar Renteria 
with the World Series winning hit in 1997 for the Florida Mar then Florida Marlins. And that one hit in the hole. Sharp, That's going to be a, a base hit. Edinson Renteria <laughs> takes the first pitch into left field and announces Pace's presence with authority. Quick star for the Spartans. Number seven, Sammy Infante. But Justin, when you're the when you're the son of Edinson Renteria, a lot expected of you. Edinson Renteria, of course, a a name in the Dominican Republic. Well, here's Sammy Infante, the shortstop. And a lot of what you would call uh, video game numbers here, Jay. Infante batting 493 on the Justin, season. Justin, if I didn't know any better, I would say someone made a mistake <laughs> when, I, when I look at the numbers for pace because it is outrageous. You use the term video game numbers, Justin, and, and yes, they are, in fact, video game numbers. That one low and outside. We didn't even get a chance to give you Renteria's numbers. Renteria hitting 468 prior to that single. So one that's home run <laughs> with one home run and nine RBIs. Sammy Infante, 493, three home runs, 17 RBIs. That it's one gets away. Balk. No, it does not. It hit him. No, it's a balk. Runner takes second. Oh, it did not hit him. It was a balk. And it was a balk. <laughs> Okay, that was unexpected. It was. So the balk <laughs> gets Red Taria right to second, second base. Yep. And he was stealing anyway. So, <laughs> you know, let's be honest. The pitch actually went to the backstop. They actually may have slowed Red Taria down because he had the opportunity possibly to go to third. But in any event, in scoring position now for Sammy Infante, the aforementioned. That's a pretty pitch on the outside part of the plate. And, you know, the one thing we've noticed, and John, by the way, John Howard on the mound for Gulliver, and we didn't, give, we didn't have a chance to, to give the numbers for John Howard. Goes sidearm. So John Howard this season, 41 innings pitched by far and away the most for Gulliver, the workhorse, a one and eight record, 5.98 ERA, 19 strikeouts against 28 walks. And that one hit hard, but to second base. Here's the play at first, they got him. Renteria advances to third base. Infante does his job, Justin, but I think he might be disappointed with that result. Probably so, but <laughs> well, when you're gets hitting, a runner over to third. When you're hitting 493, you have an expectation, <laughs> I would assume. Uh, there comes Roberto Moya. He's batting 485 on the season. Not only that, Justin, but 585 on base percentage for Infante. <laughs> so you can only imagine how he feels when he doesn't get to base. There's that sidearm again and just missed. Just missed with that one. So there is one out. Renteria third. We are in the bottom of the first inning. FHSAA regional quarterfinal action on HSBN Live. There's the overhand. He popped, popped it up. up. Shallow Coming in left to left field. field, and he makes the catch. Runner comes, and he'll no, stop. Him. So it'll just go as a short fly out to left field. Now batting number 11, Albert Hernandez. Albert Hernandez, the now pitcher coming to bat. Folks, sportsmanship is having pride in your school, your team, and yourself. Sportsmanship is respect for the game and those who play it. The Florida High School Athletic Association reminds you to take on the responsibility of good sportsmanship. Play strong, play hard, play fair. This message is provided by, the, by this station and the FHS 
AA. There's that sidearm, and he's ripped it to left field. And going back, gone. going back, and it is gone. Hernandez absolutely <laughs> destroyed that ball. It is gone. And we'll show you the replay. Hundred and twenty feet over the left field wall. Maybe four thirty, four forty. How far did that ball go, Justin? A long ways. A large man with an aluminum bat. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Here's Michael Machin, the catcher. Well, whatever it is, it's a six. It's a two run home run and popped that up one the right. popped up. Shallow going out right. and coming in, and he makes the catch. So we have a tie ball game, folks. We go to the top of the second inning. A lot of fireworks here at Pace High School. The score, Gulliver and Pace tied at two. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Regional Quarterfinal on HSBN Live. FHSAA contest officials. There's a need for officials at all levels in all sports. You can help fill those needs. I invite you to join the thousands of men and women in the FHSAA Contest Official Program. <laughs> So, Justin, now that we all have time to take a breath, let's uh, let's put the pitching stats up for both teams. Tonight, Emilio, unfortunately, folks, I know most of you who watch our broadcasts are now familiar with our producer, Emilio, who does a fabulous job. Tonight, it's Jacob Noah, who is doing a tremendous job on the board for us. It is his first time working the board, but you would not know it as he has been very smooth on the board tonight. Justin, there is nothing like a shot of adrenaline from hitting a home run to help you as a pitcher. And I guarantee you, whether he's warmed up or not, he's warmed up now. Yeah, it was a massive shot. A no doubter the second that bat made contact. But my point is that even if as a pitcher he wasn't <laughs> warmed up the first time he took the mound, I think hitting a home run would wipe away <laughs> any doubt in his mind about whether he can throw strikes tonight. Well, we'll if, find out shortly. Even though one has nothing to do with the other, you would think that that jolt of confidence is running through his, through his body right now. I would say so. As... And there are the stats for the pitchers for both of these teams. As Jacob put up the stats earlier, we uh, we got them up late on our screen, but thank you for putting up those pitching stats, Jacob. So we go now to the top of the second inning. Justin, is this the second inning or the fifth? I, I mean, so much has happened already. It, it might be the seventh that we started on time, but as it is, the top of the second inning, D'Angelo Ortiz at the plate, the first baseman. Big swing, couldn't catch up to that one. Ortiz with a chopper, that's going to go foul. So, folks, we start the second inning right back where we started as to, to start this game in the first inning, tied. It was Gulliver putting up two runs in the top of the first inning. And it was Pace powered by the current pitcher, Albert Hernandez, and his two-run home run with two runs of their own 
to answer in the top of the first inning. That's a fastball oh, nice in for strike three. He struck him out. There's that confidence, Jay. Now batting number six, Jake Gorlick. So Jake Gorlick now at the plate. The right fielder batting 281 on the season. Fastball on the inside corner for a strike. Don't do that to me, Justin. Stop that. <laughs> Justin, of course, with his regular humor, which is a big part Just of our missed. broadcast, making it hard for me to talk. <laughs> Everybody loves Justin. That's in for a strike. Nice pitch from Hernandez. <laughs> Caught it. Oh. What a nice pitch, Justin. Yeah, what a right pitch. Right at the knees. Froze him. Was it a strike? I think it was. But Pace seemed to <laughs> react as if it wasn't. Yeah, they did. I'm extremely confused. <laughs> I think it was right there at the knees. It was, it was a rough pitch. Love that pitch. And, and that he one hit him. him in the back. That is the second uh, hit batter for Hernandez. Tough way to get to first, but I'm sure he'll take it. So while we uh, have a break here, <laughs> tonight's game in the 2019 FHSAA Class 5A Baseball Championship is sponsored by the Florida High School Athletic Association. The FHSAA, the FHSAA is a democratic organization with a membership of more than 800 middle and senior high schools all committed to ensuring that Florida student athletes can compete fairly and equitably in an educational environment. The Florida High School Athletic Association, building leaders through teamwork, sportsmanship, and citizenship. So here's Jonathan Gonzalez, the DH, in the nine spot, Jay. We always talk about the nine spot. Here he goes. Spot. And he slices that one just foul. We'll see if Gulliver is running as Fumero got hit in the back, but that shouldn't affect his legs too much. He's got a really good lead at first base. Maybe Jacob can show you that lead at first base. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. That was uh, that was that was Gorlick that got hit in the back. My apologies. With the big lead over, we, we want to make sure that we give him the credit, especially since he took a an 88 mile an hour <laughs> fastball in the middle of the back. Big swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Gonzalez down on swings. That's two outs. Two out, one on. Back to the top of the order for Daniel McAuliffe. Daniel McAuliffe. Big swing. Couldn't catch up to that one. 0-1 the count now to McAuliffe. Missed way high on that one. And there's the split screen that we have.
One and one the count now. Caught him at the knees. Nice pitch, one and two to McAuliffe. Hernandez seems to be in control here. Organized clapping from Gulliver. Runner goes. goes. Got Swing him. a miss. He struck him out. There'll be no play at second Makes base. Makes no difference. <laughs> that will do it. Hernandez strikes out the side. Sandwiched in between was a hit back. Was Gorlick getting popped in the back. Yeah. But, but <laughs> Hernandez won't care. <laughs> no. Justin, all six outs have been fired by a strikeout. Strike That's correct. There have been no balls in play where an out has been recorded. Nope, that is correct. Now, let's keep in mind there are two runs on the board for Gulliver, so it's not it's not as if there's there hasn't been any action, but all six of the outs have been via the strikeout. Santos with the lone hit of the night for the Raiders. And let's remind everybody that you are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Regional Quarterfinal Action on HSBN Live. All right, folks, bottom of the second. We are tied at two. This is Victor Medeiros, the first baseman. Medeiros batting 273 on the Swing season. A miss at the curveball. Howard, Justin, reminds me a lot of that pitcher from Shamanad Madonna, Miguel Rosado, that we saw against... St. Thomas, there's that curveball in for a strike. 0-2 oh the count now. Little percussion coming out of the pace dugout. That's left way up high. 1-2 and two now to Menderos. There's that curveball he missed. he missed inside. Lots of action for you folks so far. If you're just joining us, expecting us to be in the sixth inning already, <laughs> we had a lightning delay, which included 50 mile an hour winds and quarter sized hail. Hit down on the ground, foul down the left side. Albeit briefly, but it was enough to keep the lightning meter on for over an hour here at Pace High School. The Thor system keeping up Saul safe. We had to take all of our equipment down and bring it all inside, which was a lot of fun. Here's that side. Uh, it's pitch. in the dirt. <laughs> you know, Justin. When he goes down sidearm like that, it's a really awkward look for the batter. It is hard to pick that ball up. It is, and now it's a full count here for Medeiros. And that one rip, but right out nice the third catch. baseman. 
Beautiful Lu catch. Luis there. Aparicio, the star for Gulliver, <laughs> leaped in the air and made that catch. <laughs> Darian Fumero now the batter. Fumero 309 on the season. He pops that one right, right at back. The pitcher who's not even going to Right make at the Howard. Throw. He's just oh, going to no, walk it in. Throw. <laughs> An underhanded throw, but a throw nonetheless. And two quick outs. So one to three there. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the second inning is now the number eight hitter, Mateo Torres. He is the designated hitter, number 33. Hitting 238 this season. Limited action, only 21 at bats. And that one hit on the ground to third. Aparicio up and over, and he got him. That will do it. One, two, three inning. Aparicio gets two of the three outs. And a very quick inning for Howard on the mound. We go to the top of the third inning. We are all tied two to two here at Pace High School. Well, Justin, it has been quite a season here on HSBN Live, our first season, and we have done an incredible amount of games, and we still have more to come as more playoff games on the way. We are being told, I was just told a few minutes ago, that we will be doing the game at Miami Christian on Friday, so that should be a lot of fun. And here we go, folks, top of the third inning. It's going to be Alejandro Castro leading it off. He scored in the first inning. After walking, that was the at-bat, Justin, that Carmona came out of the game, and Hernandez, without any warm-ups, came in and threw a ball and walked him. So Miami Christian plays Trinity Christian on Friday. That game will be at 3.30 right here on HSBN Live. Big swing and a miss at the low pitch. Maybe a little bit below his knees there. A good looking pitch from Hernandez. Big swing at that one. Hernandez pitching downhill. Good velocity on that fastball, hard to get to it. On deck, Luis Aparicio, who recorded two of the three outs last inning and also scored a run in the first inning after being hit by a pitch. He was, he was hit, Justin, by the second pitch that Hernandez threw in the first inning. 
Big swing and a miss at the curveball. He struck him out. Another out via the strikeout. It is seven for seven. Not bad in number 10, Luis Aparicio. Carmona recorded the first out via the strikeout, and it has been since then Hernandez that has recorded the next six. So all outs via the strikeout for Pace. Put, takes a lot of pressure off your defense. But the other thing, Justin, that it does is it makes it harder as that is a swing and miss at the high fastball. It does make it harder for your defense because when the ball does finally get put into play, sometimes your fielders might not be as ready. You almost get caught watching. That one fouled straight back. Oh. You know, I would, uh, I would put it akin to the power forward of the Houston Rockets. While James Harden will probably score a lot of points, sometimes <laughs> with four seconds left in the shot clock, he'll pass it to you, and you're, and you're just not ready for it. Uh, that one hit on the ground the shot. third. Here's the play at third, up and over, they will and it not. gets away, just as we said. Sometimes the fielders have a hard time when the pitchers are striking out everybody. And we just saw it right there. So, Aparicio reaches base again. So Noah Fry now the batter. Hernandez taking his time. Big swing and a miss from Fry. Fry, the number four hitter for Gulliver. This season, Noah Fry hitting 308 with 12 RBIs, second to Aparicio in RBIs. Fastball low. The Florida High School Athletic Association recognizes its corporate partners who help make the FHSAA baseball championships possible. Curveball in for a strike. Champion, Team IP, the official merchandising company of the FHSAA Gatorade Thirst Quencher, fueling the future. Main Light Events, the official photo company of the FHSAA. Balfour, the official supplier of championship rings for the FHSAA. Spectrum Sports, the official television partner of the FHSAA. Max Preps, official scores and statistics of the FHSAA. GoFan, official online ticket provider of FHSAA. And Wilson, provider of the official game ball for the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Championships. Did I get it all in? I, I hope so. Only one pitch. <laughs> I, th I think we only missed one pitch. It was a ball. So we have one on and one out here in the top of the third inning. Big swing and a miss at that fastball. Another strikeout. That is eight. The, the eighth strikeout <laughs> of the game, although seven for Hernandez. Right. Carmona did strike out the first batter. And now meeting at the mound. I should have waited, Justin. <laughs> I could have gotten the whole thing in. No, that wasn't the whole thing? Oh, it, it was. It just <laughs> took me a couple of breaths to get it in. 
Here, I'm going to read it again because I had to break it up into two. So, The Florida High School Athletic Association recognizes its corporate partners who help make the FHSAA baseball championships possible. Champion, Team IP, the official mer merchandising company of the FHSAA, Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Fueling the Future, Main Light Events, the official photo company of the FHSAA, Balfour, the official supplier of championship Lawrence. rings. Now in number 23, Luis Gonzalez. So another pitching change here, and we'll get to that momentarily as we will continue to recognize our sponsors here. Balfour, the official supplier of championship rings for the FHSAA, Spectrum Sports, the official television partner of the FHSAA, Max Preps, official scores and statistics of the FHSAA, GoFan, official online ticket provider of the FHSAA, and Wilson, provider of the official game ball for the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Championships. And we do have a new pitcher. Justin, why don't we, uh, why don't we see who that is? Number 23, Luis Gonzalez. Four and one on the season, one five eight ERA. 66 strikeouts to 19 walks. So Jacob will put up the pitching stats for pace so you can see on your screen what each of their pitchers have done this season. Thank you, Jacob. Jacob doing a bang up job, a last minute replacement. Usually Jacob is here working our cameras, but tonight doing double duty. Base on Bayer was out of position, had to come back into play, and we are about ready to resume action here. Pace with their third pitcher already. There's the fastball in for a strike. It's almost a rinse repeat situation, Justin. You had Carmona breathing fire at everybody, then Hernandez throwing fire at everybody, and now a in the dirt. third pitcher that also throws very hard. Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez's curveball a little bit sharper. There's that fastball. Nice tie, though. But you can see he has good velocity. Very good velocity. And you can see the split screen. You can see the runner at first base. <laughs> Aparicio looking for a reason to get to second base here. He might just take it upon himself, Justin. That's a pretty big lead. And you can see on your split screen, folks, he might be ready to go. Snap throw to first, and it almost got away. Oh, dangerous throw, Jay. Victor Medeiros, the first baseman, had to stretch to get that ball and keep it from going into right field. That could have been big trouble. Runner does go, and it's Walked ball four. Santos on base for the second time tonight. As is Aparicio. So both, the, both base runners have been on base twice tonight. So William Betridge at the plate for his second appearance tonight. Went down swinging back in the first as <laughs> do most of the Raiders who don't get a hit or get hit by the ball.
just missed him with that one. It is two out, two on here in the top of the third. A little bit of tension here, Justin. I don't think Pace expected to, at least the fans, I don't think expected to, uh, to have this type of ball game here. Hotly contested. There's the fastball in for a strike. That's in for a strike. Huge crowd here tonight. Even Gulliver traveled very well as pace about, what would you say, Justin, 45 minutes, an hour away from Gulliver? We actually took that trip ourselves All right, tonight, yeah. since we do live near Gulliver. Fastball up high. Bethridge being patient. Looks like the count is even at two and two. We'll see if Luis Gonzalez comes in with the fastball here on the two and two. He comes in low. Excuse me, it was three, it was three and, two. and two. He walked And him. now the bases it up. are loaded. Now batting number 27, D'Angelo Ortiz. D'Angelo Ortiz is second at bat of the night. Big situation here, and that one is up high. The count is 1-0, and oh, Justin. And now a conference here as Luis Gonzalez has pitched himself into a pickle. Mmm, pickle. Speaking of pickles, we were able to sample the fare here at Monsignor Pace. But no pickles. No pickles, but there were very good steak sandwiches. Very tasty steak sandwiches. Very good had. steak sandwiches. During the lightning and since delay. We, and since we never got to try the steak sandwiches at the other ballparks we've been at, there were some good ones that we've heard about, but we were not able to sample any. So this was the first steak sandwich we've had this season, believe it or not, folks. There's the fastball in for a nice strike. Pitch. Count two and one. <laughs> that one low. That low. Could it be? Could he walk in a run? Just gotta throw a strike here. Got to throw the strike. And that he one missed. is low, and he did he walk did in walk a run. In. Gulliver has taken the lead. Unbelievable. All runners will advance. It's now Jake Gorlick, who was hit square in the back in his last at bat, and now another pitching conference and possibly another pitching removal or is this just a discussion because there are two outs Justin there really isn't much to talk about other than you better throw a strike here right that's what I would think no 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 change just some advice wearing out the path between the pitcher's mound and the dugout is pace Coach Duffin wants to take the air out of the stadium a little bit right now and almost like a timeout. Well, yeah, all the momentum is with the Raiders at the moment. There's that fastball. Nice he swung pitch. right through it. Gulliver side of the stands making a lot of noise now. There's that fastball again. He had to know the fastball was coming, Justin. There's nowhere to put him. Fastball just missed. Just missed, wow. You can hear the Pace fans ooing and eyeing at that one. 
just a little bit off the plate, and you can hear the Gulliver fans in unison saying, good call. <laughs> it's amazing what one pitch can do for both sets of fans. Big swing and miss. He struck him out, and that will do it. Gonzalez gets out of the jam, but Gulliver puts a run on the board, a huge run, and now leads pace three to two. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Region Quarterfinal on HSBN Live. People asking who's pitching for Gulliver. It is Howard still on the mound for Gulliver. We did not get the names of the umpires for those of you asking about the names of the umpires. We do have a three-man crew today. So we have an umpire behind home plate, an umpire at first, and an um umpire at third. So we go to the bottom of the third inning. And again, the number nine batter, J.M.C. Cigaro, batting 309 on the season, second baseman for the Spartans. We were talking with his father before the game tonight, and that popped one up popped and up. foul into the dugout. His father, Mike, is someone who is a, a friend of the program here. We like Mike a lot. one missed Howard has had a very effective performance tonight Justin but completely the opposite of the performance that we're seeing out of the pace pitchers tonight involving his fielders and that one involves his fielders it's a pop-up and should be a play and he makes the catch Alejandro Castro ranged to his left. Alejandro Castro ranged to his left and was able to catch that pop-up from Cigarro. Just in every inning that goes by where Gulliver is either tied or in the lead. And it looks like Howard's coming out, Jay. He is coming out and it's number three. Number three coming is in. coming in. So that'll be and Julian Hero. Pitching for the Raiders, number three, Julian Arrow. Arrow only with five and two-thirds innings pitched this season. He did, Justin, have a 4.94 ERA, but more importantly, a 12 strikeout to four walk ratio. So a three to one ratio, which by far and away is the best on Gulliver. So even though he hasn't been used much this season, he's kind of a well-hidden gem. They'll be counting on him tonight with a one-run lead. Use the, use that one. Oh, um, green, here. You gotta keep 
YouTube. Justin, this is the fifth pitcher we've seen, and we're only in the top of the third <laughs> inning. So, are we on pace to have 12 pitchers? 13? How many? Uh, who knows? Who knows? We are we are actually is, in the bottom of the third. Is this like a game seven? Is this like a World Series game seven <laughs> where they'll just keep changing pitchers every 10 minutes? It's possible. It is the bottom of the third, fifth pitching change we've had tonight and back to the top of the order for the Spartans and in center Renteria Renteria with one of Spartans two hits tonight that one is chopped foul Big curveball. Almost sounded like it hit him. And no one goes to get the baseball. Now one of the dugout players comes out. There's that That's a nice strike on the outside part of the plate and in for a strike. This is high again. Just left in the dirt, full count. Big pitch coming, Jay. He missed it outside. So Renteria, Renteria on his way to first. Renteria flips the bat about 12 feet in the air. Now batting, number seven, Sammy Infante. So now one on, one out for Semi Infante, his second at bat of the evening. And the Spartans bench getting noisy. Hoping to get something going here, to at least tie up the game. Folks, we want to remind everybody to not use the chat line for anything other than words of encouragement and uh, to use as questions for us here at HSBN Live. And this is high school baseball. For those of you curious what age I, I saw on the text line here.
Runner goes. He will be safe. Renteria over to second with a stolen base. It's a big stolen base, Justin. You only it got is. one out. And now you'll have two opportunities to bring him home with a hit. Fastball yeah, up, up high. high. Wow. It's a huge situation here, Justin. Gulliver leading three to two. We are in the bottom of the third inning. Big swing and a miss that fastball. He struck him out. A huge strikeout. Now up number 16, Robert Moya. So Robert Moya, the next batter for the Spartans, batting 485. Julian Arrow gave him the high heat, a little dose of what we've seen from Pace. Moya hitting 485 this season, two home runs, 23 RBIs. Just to put that in perspective, Justin, he has 10 more RBIs than the top RBI getter for Gulliver this season. But it's really been Albert Hernandez who's been the story for Pace. Missed Ball way up by runner's gonna go Here's to third. Here's the throw to third base, there'll be no throw. is over to third. But now with two outs, Justin, that does change the scenario dramatically. With one out, there would have been a variety, a myriad, a plethora of ways to get that run home. With two outs, not so many. Well, we'll see if Moya can find one of those. As his team trails by one here in the bottom of the third. Missed that one. That one in for a strike. Arrow looking to get out of this inning. And he got him. Nice pitch. Moy has to step out and reset after that pitch. We'll give you a look at the pitcher and the hitter on this pitch. A huge pitch in this game. Big hit! This is and going back! Gone. It is going way back! It is gone! Wow. Destroyed two baseballs and put his stamp that, on this game. I hate to ruin the party, Jay, but that was Roberto Moya with the home run. Excuse, excuse me, it was Roberto <laughs> Moya. So they now have home runs out of the three and four batters and on the night. It, it looked like the same swing. It was Roberto <laughs> Moya who hit the home run 
a two-run home run from Hernandez and a two-run home run from Moya. And now this is Hernandez at the plate. Yeah, that was another <laughs> That was another no-brainer though, Jay. I mean, as soon as the, the ball made contact with the bat, he just stood there and watched it. He my, knew it was gone. My apologies to Roberto Moya as, <laughs> as it looked like the a replay and he stood and watched it. Right. This is Hernandez. Once again. Did. It almost looked like a like a replay of what we saw back in the first inning. Yeah, the Spartans know when it's gone. So when my, they make that contact. My sincere apologies. But Roberto Moya absolutely destroyed that baseball and knew it as soon as he hit it. Pace now all over the umpires. Pace has taken the lead. Oh, the umpire. A warning. Coming over with it looks warning. like a bench warning. You can hear Gulliver. Good call, Blue. Oh. Okay, they've gotten the warning. The base has, umpire not Pace having has it. finally taken the lead in this game. They have, four to three. It took them about halfway through the game to finally get the lead. Two bombs from the left fielder and the And that one fielder. ripped into left field. At That's going to be a base hit. Albert Hernandez is now two for two. He has a smooth. One of the uh, texters writes in, oh, let's just, just hope you all come to broadcast the Key West game on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, we will not be able to broadcast that game on Saturday. Our deepest apologies. That one gets away. He's going to go for second. Is He'll there going to be it. a throw? There'll be no, no throw. throw. Smart play, smart play. So Hernandez now at second base. The two outs, you don't want a wild throw there. This has been a wild game. Big swing and a miss. Good pitch there, he dropped down sidearm on that one. Heavy percussion coming from the pace dugout. <laughs> Sounding a lot like Miami-Dade College when we uh, broadcasted the softball girls. Had a good time doing that. We did four games for Miami-Dade College on South Florida Broadcast Network Channel 2. So it looks like the third base umpire admonished the Spartans bench for whatever they were doing and now has shifted over towards second base. So as not to incur any of their wrath, I guess. No, he needs to be there because that's where the runner is. <laughs> <laughs> In for a strike. I know it made for a better plot the way you uh, you brought it out, Justin, but. Well, because we don't know what he admonished them about. We, we really don't have a clue. We couldn't hear from over yeah, here. Yeah, this isn't a situation where uh, he's afraid to be next to the dugout. <laughs> Although that does make for a better plot. He missed outside and walked him. Machine on his way to first. Just cannot get out of this inning here, Jay. The Raiders just cannot get out. <laughs> Victor Medeiros. So Victor Medeiros, the first baseman, will now come to hit. Medeiros hitting 273, but Justin, he's got four home runs this season. And with the way Pace is hitting the ball out of the ballpark right now, I would be very, very careful with how they pitch Medeiros here.
That one hit on the ground to third base, but foul. foul. Madero's lined out to third base back in the second inning. I should probably just refer to that as last inning. As this game has suddenly slowed to a crawl here. We are in the bottom of the third. Spartans are up four to three over the Raiders. Give you a good two look out, at, two on. Give you a good look at Maderos and, and Arrow. That's a nice pitch on the outside part of the plate. Game has slowed down a bit here. Way Just up, up high. high. Wow. Arrow seems to have some trouble finding the strike zone at the moment. Time called. And now, uh -oh. the home plate umpire is looking at the pace bench. Oh, he's just asking for baseballs. <laughs> but again, was, where we are, we it, it, it looked to so. me like they were going to admonish them, and then then we got the word in that it was for baseballs. Big swing and oh, a miss. Got him swinging. He struck him out, and it. that will do it. But. Another two-run home run from Pace, this time from Roberto Moya. And Pace leading Gulliver 4-3. to three. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Region Quarterfinal on HSBN Live. So, here we go, folks. Top of the fourth inning. Pace leading four to three over Gulliver. It has been a very entertaining game. Very exciting. Two two-run home runs by Pace. You know, Justin, it's amazing to think that if Gulliver could have just kept the ball in the ballpark, they might be <laughs> leading 3 nothing right now. They very well could have been. But two huge shots from the Spartans. Two no-doubters. the complexion, yeah. And here's the number nine hitter again, Jay. 
you know, Jonathan the, Gonzalez. The buzzword that the kids use these days is launch angle. I think those both have the right launch angle. <laughs> So he got him, Jay. Another and the, strikeout. The only way they get them is by strikeout. Number 18, Daniel McCullough. That's number 10. Back up to the top of the order with Daniel McAuliffe. McAuliffe 0 for 2, two strikeouts. Look to see if he can get something going. Well, Justin, that's almost redundant because every out has been via the strikeout. So Absolutely. if he's 0 for 2, <laughs> then it stands to reason two strikeouts. that he has two strikeouts. And we're not picking on uh, McAuliffe, of course, because, no? because Pace has struck out literally <laughs> every out that there has been in this game. Right, has been a strikeout. That's left up high, though. But the good news for Gulliver is they have three runs. So sandwiched in between... All of these strikeouts has been good action for Gulliver. Absolutely. Three runs in three innings against Pace is a is a good output. Fouled back. That one just missed. I'm not sure where. Maybe a little bit outside. Hey, he walked him. Baseball fans, the best games are yet to be played. Make plans to attend the 2019 Florida Number High School. One, Alejandro Castro. Make plans to attend the 2019 Florida High School Baseball State Championships hosted by Lee County Sports Development. The action takes place May 22nd through June 1st at Hammond Stadium in Fort Myers. Admission is $9 if bought in advance or $12 at the gate per session. Come watch the best in Florida high school baseball play. Visit the FHSAA website at FHSAA. Dot o -R -G for more information. This is Alejandro Castro. Castro 0 for 1 with a walk. Back in the first. Came around to score the Raiders' first run of the night. Big swing at that fastball. Way up high. <laughs> yeah. So one out, one on here in the top of the fourth. Castro at the plate. You know, Justin, that walk from McAuliffe is the sixth free pass given by Pace tonight. So even though they have struck out every single out, they have also been very generous with the free passes. It's five walks and a hit batter. There's that fastball right at the knees and in for strike three, he struck him out. Well, technically I got two batters getting hit tonight, Jay. I got Aprecio and Gorlick both getting plunked. But yes, many, many walks to go with the many strikeouts. And here is Aparicio. 
some yeah, Louis so fans here. It was, it was here. four and two, not five and one. You are correct. Still, still six free passes. Correct. Amongst <laughs> the what now is eleven strikeouts. So eleven strikeouts, four walks, and two hit batters, and a partridge in a pear tree tonight. <laughs> Miss Lou at that one. But, Justin, you know, we said when we did the Riviera game back a couple weeks ago that how rare it was to have several runs on the board on one hit, if you remember. Absolutely. Well, tonight we have three runs on the board and one hit. (laughs) A helicopter flying overhead, a flyover, if you will, a very slow one. Oh. Foul tipped it into the glove. Couldn't catch up with that one. Monsignor Pace right in the helicopter flight path. The folks in the helicopter getting a good look at some tremendous high school baseball. 5A high school baseball here tonight. Snap throw to first back in time. I think we went over that during the lightning delay and determined that that was Opalaka. Airport where we're getting these from. Bow back. Watch my car. I just got a new one. <laughs> As we are not real familiar with this area, coming up from Justin, South I, Miami. I traded yes. my car in on Friday, and there were four baseball dents in my car when no, I traded it in. No, there were three baseball dents Excuse and a softball me. dent. Excuse me. <laughs> three, three baseball and a softball. And, and, and the... The guy I traded my car into said, what, what happened to your car? <laughs> I said, well, I'm around a lot of baseball games. <laughs> so, folks, when I say watch my car, I, I mean it. Runner, Runner goes. goes. And jogs over. No throw. It was a wicked curveball that he was able to lay off. Don't see a lot of standing stolen bases, but McAuliffe accomplishes that right there. And this is an important at-bat here because the best batter for Gulliver is Luis Aparicio. And by him stealing a base, I wonder if they're going to put him on. They didn't. And he hits the ball to third. And it goes through his legs. Uh, he dropped Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. Just couldn't, I thought we couldn't were gonna get the edge of the glove on the, the ground. First recorded out. <laughs> not via the strikeout. But No. Aparicio has reached base twice tonight via the error. Ennison and Renteria just couldn't get the edge of the glove down against the ground hard enough, and that ball squirted through. So, first and third. And two outs for Noah Fry, the catcher. Fry also 0 for 2 on the evening, but a 308 average. This is a huge situation. Low. Fry's 0 for 2, Justin, but we're not gonna we're not gonna say how he made those two outs because the fans already know. <laughs> There's that fastball. Ooh, that's in for a strike. May have been off the plate by about two or three inches, but it was called a strike. Well, the umpiring seems to be consistent tonight. That one missed. Gamer27 says, I like the split screen also. It's like the majors, but you guys are more colorful. (laughs) So, Justin, we are officially more colorful than the majors. All right, we'll take it. Thank you, Color 27, Gamer 27. Foul tipped it into the glove. And we're glad everybody's using the text <laughs> line here tonight. We've got a good audience out there. Just please use it correctly. Well, we had to we had to issue a warning back in the second inning, but since then everything seems to be in order. 
Just missed. Wow. And Pace doesn't like it. <laughs> the players and the fans. <laughs> Pace upset. <laughs> Gulliver saying it was outside. And the Gulliver fans saying, great call. <laughs> You call your game, <laughs> encouraging the umpire to call his game and not be intimidated. I love it. I love listening to these fans. Big Got swing him. and a miss. He struck him out. That is 12 strikeouts for Pace. Unbelievable. Gulliver leaves two base runners on and continues to trail four to three. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Region quarterfinal on HSBN Live. And Justin, again, tonight is a winner go home as the winner of this game will move on to face the winner of iModder versus Key West. Posting pictures from today's event on your social media accounts, tag the FHSAA and we'll retweet and share it. Follow the FHSAA on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat by searching for FHSAA. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash FHSAA on the site you can keep up with teams and people who strive to make high school athletics in the state of Florida the best. That's facebook.com slash FHSAA. <laughs> Bottom of the fourth and the Spartan send up number 12, Darian Fumero. It's good. <laughs> Fastball at the knees and in for a strike, and we are back underway here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pace leading four to three. Darian Fumero at the plate. Count one and one. Did he hold back? He held back. Okay. Um. That one is popped up towards first. It is playable. Is it playable? Yes, it is. Easy catch over there by Ortiz. And here is the DH, Mateo Torres. And his left up high. Torres not biting. That's in for a strike. Romero checking with the umpire to make sure that was a strike. I'm guessing the answer was yep. That one's low and outside. Two and one the count now to Torres. And 
And that one again misses low and outside. That one hit hard down the right That's field line. Down. That's a fair ball. That's going to be it's go gonna for go a double. All the way into the corner. Rounding He's going to push two. On his way to second. Here comes the throw to second base. He's, He's going to be safe at second. Nice he hit. just got in under the throw. First. Jake Gorlick fired a cannon from the right field corner all the way by the 300 sign. Right at the fair pole, he picked that ball up and fired an absolute laser to second base. I gotta tell you, Justin, Torres <laughs> was lucky to get in there. He was. He was. Gorlick had a lot more on his throw than people thought he would. And we are down to the number nine batter, MC Cigarro. Get a uh, courtesy runner here. Number five will come in. Number five, Thomas Duffin. So Thomas Duffin. So it's the coach's kid, Justin. <laughs> Tom Duffin Jr. over at second now. Nice to see Junior getting in the game. <laughs> Justin, he is just a sophomore. So we'll, we'll be seeing Coach's kid next season. Hit on the ground up the middle. This is going to be a hard play. That is and there will be no play. play. Cigarro gets an infield hit. Duffin now over on third. Julian Arrow, the pitcher was able to knock it down, but he didn't quite have his balance. No, there was, there was no play to be made there. He was lucky to knock it down. That'll take us back to the top of the order with Edinson Renteria. One out, two on here in the bottom of the fourth. And with runners at first and third, Justin, watch out here. Keeping an eye on Cigarro. He's going to stick around at first. There's a dribbler foul. situation here first and third only one out Gulliver's got to be careful here Justin they have stayed in this game yes they have using duct tape and glue and string <laughs> maybe some flex seal a couple of mirrors and some smoke definitely smoke and a little bit of pixie dust. It has been a fabulous game for the fans here. And we have enjoyed it very much. We're about halfway through this game tonight. Runner goes. He's going to go for no strike. throw. It leaves, so. leaves the door open to walk Renneria here. Walking him would be dangerous here. As they could load up the bases, however, with only one out, that would mean they will most likely face Moya again. I'm not sure they want to do that. 
at least not that quickly, with bases loaded. I think, Justin, they should really think about either IB being or UIB being rent or No, I just, I just went over that. <laughs> As there's only one out, and Moya would be in the on-deck circle after that. There's the UIBB. And there he goes. That's the UIBB. Put that in your book, folks. UIBB, the unintentional, intentional walk. Well, there we go, Jay. Unless they induce the double play, they will be looking at Roberto Moya again. Well, it's not just that. Sammy Infante. <laughs> Sammy Infante is his own wrecking crew. He is. Infante this season, Justin, hitting 493 with three home runs. So definitely a formidable opponent here. That one misses high. So two on, one out with a one run lead. Here in the bottom of the fourth for the Spartans. Get dirty, get dirty. That one misses low. Just gonna have to throw strikes here, Jay, otherwise they're gonna walk in a run. Huge situation here. Fastball missed. Just missed. I mean, Justin, uh. you don't want to walk in a run, but walking in one run is better than a base clearing double. It is, although the bases would still be juiced. Well, no, a base clearing double means there, there would be one person on the base. Right, but should they just walk in the one, one run, the base, and they just did. So now, now the problem comes in, Jay, as I was mentioning, as the next two batters are Moya and Hernandez, the two home run hitters. That is true. Torres for the scores. evening. Torres, yeah. or actually Duffin yeah. Jr. comes around for him. Yes. Yeah, the coach's kid comes Co around. Coach's kid. <laughs> coach's kid gets a run on the books. Good for him. And uh, now, here is Moya. We got all sorts of problems if we're Gulliver right now because right. we have the two two-run home run hitters. Back to back with only one out. And they have both hit balls 400 plus feet tonight. Two no doubters. And now with bases loaded, there's nowhere to put them. And nope. there's only one out. Oh boy. Things falling apart here for the Raiders. A one and zero count. All the momentum right now squarely on the side of Pace. Gulliver has played a tremendous game tonight. Fastball in for a strike right at the knees. That is a pretty pitch. Tense moments here at Pace High School. Gulliver trailing five to three. Pace has the bases loaded and only one out. Time called. Here's the pitch. Curveball oh. out straight back. He was looking for the fastball. How's that one backwards off of Noah Fry's mask? That was a huge swing right there, Justin. 
the air was let out of the crowd with that swing. <laughs> Pace trying to keep up the energy and the positive momentum they have right now. Gulliver trying to stop the bleeding. Curveball misses. Count two and two. Big pitch coming here. Fastball on the ground. Boy, this could be a double it. play. Second for one, back to first, and it no. gets away. Here That'll comes a second run. run. Two runs score. Huh. Renneria scoring as well. Now by number 11. Cigarro and Renteria both score. They'll go as a fielder's choice. There are two outs, but it is now seven to three. Pace leading by four now. Infante was out at second base on the fielder's choice. Moya reached first on the fielder's choice. Renteria and Cigarro both score. Three runs already in this inning for pace and they are not done yet as the man at the plate Justin is two for two <laughs> with two RBIs and a massive home run popped it up it's gonna be a hard play Justin it is and it's foul, it's foul. just, just foul. foul wow that must have missed by inches <laughs> From our vantage point, it looked like it was on the fair ball side of the of the foul line. But hard to tell as we are not directly behind home. So Justin, if people, if some people call the foul pole the fair pole, right? we've heard that before. Why isn't the foul line the fair line? Uh, I don't know. Fair lines, you close to fair lane? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I think I may have started something. Maybe Ford had a complaint. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm gonna. That's a good question. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna <laughs> see if that'll stick. Okay. Because it is the line that decides a fair ball. Correct. And if it hits the line, it's fair. It's a fair ball. So it's the fair line. It's not a foul line. If it hits the foul line, it's fair. So how could it be a foul line? I'm not sure. It's a good question. One this, of those brains we This is upsetting there, me. Jay. I have to tell you, I'm very upset right now. Don't talk to me. I'm All very right. upset. So that ball just missed the fair line. I like the sound of that. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to say foul line ever again. Okay. I think you may have heard me say foul line for the last time. Popped up. That is playable. Is it? Is it? No, no. No, there is no play. <laughs> So he'll get another crack at it. Will Hernandez, and the last thing you want to do is give Hernandez another chance. And Jay Gore looks quick out there in right field, but not quick enough to get all the way over for that one. Well, if he was as fast as his arm is strong, he, he would have caught it. <laughs> Absolutely. He was right near the fair line.
Already a huge inning for the Spartans here, Jay. And a long one. Yes, it's it's dragging. <laughs> Cannot get out of the fourth inning, apparently. And it's also concerning for Gulliver because how many more pitchers do they have? That's nice pitch! Strike. And for strike three, he struck him out! It's a beautiful pitch, and that will do it. But Pace comes up with three huge runs and now has taken firm control. Pace leads seven to three. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Region quarterfinal on HSBN Live. For the latest official news about Florida high school sports, including updated brackets in the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Championships, visit FHSAA.org, the official website of Florida High School Athletic Association. That's www.FHSAA.org. Catch live and on-demand postseason coverage of Florida high school sports at www dot nfhs network dot com brought to you by the nfhs network the official online partner of the fhsaa and don't forget folks you can catch all the action right here on hsbn live All right, folks, we now have a four-run lead for Pace, a four-run deficit for Gulliver. It is seven to three in favor of Pace, and Pace in firm control of this game right now. Jake Santos. Justin has reached pace twice for Gulliver. He has. And will lead off here. And Gulliver's not out of it. They have been scrappy. They are a good young ball club that have been in the lead for most of this game. Stay there. Let's go. Get it going early. So Victor Medeiros takes the mound early. for pace. He is the fourth pitcher. All the way on the back side of the dugouts. So Madero's now in on the mound for the Spartans. And Jake Santos at the play for the Raiders. Trailing by three here in the top of the fifth inning. Fans coming alive here, the Gulliver fans at least. Big swing, couldn't catch up to that one. Misses low, he walked him. So Santos on his way over to first. That's 
It's going to bring up William Betridge. Betridge 0 for 1 with a walk tonight. Will Betridge. Pitch is in for a strike. One gets away, so Santos going to make his way over to second on the wild pitch. Catch up to that one either. Medeiros looking good here so far. As the fourth pitcher for the Spartans. Foul tip, he got him. So a first strikeout for Medeiros. One on one out now for D'Angelo Ortiz. D'Angelo Ortiz. Ortiz as well, 0 for 1 with a walk. That one misses low and outside. Swing and a miss. Raiders fans encouraging Ortiz to shorten up his swing. Runner goes. He got him out. He got him out as well. <laughs> Santos out of third, Ortiz down on swing, down swinging. Oh, I'm sorry, Ortiz not down swinging. Only two strikes. I apologize, I thought that was a bang bang two out play. Well, the threat now off the base pass, two outs for Ortiz. And he got him with that one. So that will do it. Ortiz goes down swinging. No runs across. What?
Okay, folks, we we now go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Pace leading seven to three over Gulliver. Bum, bum, bum. Julian Arrow still in the game for Gulliver has done yeoman's like work, but Pace has just been too strong. But Justin, we did have something happen that inning that is uh, noteworthy. The first out recorded <laughs> that was not a strikeout, albeit it wasn't a play made in the field. No. Nope. So there still have been zero putouts mm -hmm. in the field. That's correct. We I don't know that we've ever gone no. five innings no. without a recorded out in the field. No. I think this is the first. As they so did catch. Five, five innings for Gulliver and 14 strikeouts. For pace. Yes. There's Michael Machin. On pace for 20 is pace. Correct. Quite a pace. <laughs> Quite a pace for pace. All right. Well, I know the Spartans are happy with their four run lead at the moment. And why not? They have done it all different ways with the long ball, with rallies, with good pitching pace has has played an excellent game and you know let's let's also tell it like it is Gulliver's played a good game too they have played a good game no question about that we came into this game Justin not knowing what we were gonna see tonight we saw the records of the two teams and Someone even asked us, someone came up to me and asked, how is Gulliver even in the playoffs? And I, you know, I explained to them that, you know, sometimes you can get into the playoffs with a losing record, um, you know, depending on uh, how large your district is and things like that. And, uh, you know, one of the one of the fans here, uh, you know, didn't know how the, the high school them. playoff system worked. But, you know, throw all that other stuff out. Gulliver's played a good game tonight. Yes, they have. So he'll have a courtesy runner. Number one. Uh, yes, sir. And joining the first base for the Spartans, number one, Sean, Sean Ambrose. Ambrose. So Sean okay. Ambrose will be the courtesy runner at first base for Matchin. Really important for Gulliver to keep the score where it is right now. Runner goes. Here's the throw to second base. He's going to be safe at second. And the ball gets ball away. Gets through, but oh. he'll stay right there. They're lucky. I they mean, you got to think, you know, Justin, if you're Gulliver, you got to think they just put a courtesy runner in. He might be stealing. Right. They didn't seem to be paying attention for that, though. So that is a stolen base for Ambrose. And Madero's at the plate. This is a huge inning for Gulliver. Gulliver must stop the bleeding here and keep the score at seven to three. <laughs> a straight golf cart somehow got into our broadcast. And then worse Ball yet, started away. going backwards. The runner will get to third easily. My chin all the way over. So, so now Ambrose, the courtesy runner, Sorry. came in. <laughs> Came in and in two pitches finds himself on, on third, third base. base. Steals second and a wild pitch brings him to third. So quite a start for the Spartans here. No outs. Runner on third. Yeah, this is big trouble, Justin. Big trouble for Gulliver. Oh, almost hit him. Almost got him with that one. They walked him. Not Don't be surprised start. to see another stolen base here, Justin. Yeah, not a good start here. 
for the Raiders. I think you're also going to see another courtesy runners. Darian Fumero. Yeah, we're going to have another courtesy runner, Justin, which also tells me we are. that there he goes. it's going to uh, be a, a runner that like has four. some speed. Looks like Michael Gonzalez to me. I'm going to say yeah, it Michael is. Michael Gonzalez. Darian Fumero with two on, no outs here in the top of the fifth. I'm sorry, bottom of the fifth. Runner goes, no throw. And we figured. Neros over to second. We figured that was going to happen. Or I'm sorry, Gonzalez over to second. No outs. And now we might see the UIBB here. Fumero might get the old UIBB. Unintentional, intentional walk. No, they let him hit. Boy, they gave him a good pitch to hit there, too. And Fumero almost made them pay. I mean, let's be honest, Justin. There's no one you really want to pitch to in this lineup. No. It really doesn't matter for the most part who you pitch to it's just a question of circumstance and right now the infield is in so Fumero who this season hitting 309 turns him into a 400 hitter with the infield in and he, look at he hit it right to second base and it's recorded though. out wow oh and he hits himself in the head with his bat he reached Down and it's a recorded though. out. Wow. Oh, and he hits himself in the head with his. I see the night with a double in the last inning. Can you hear me? Umpire calls time. That was a huge out for Gulliver. Fastball almost gets away. Saved a run there. Noah Fry had to really reach for that one. Just missed outside with that offering. Seven runs on seven hits for Pace. Three runs on one hit for Gulliver tonight. That one hit on the ground, but again at second base. They're going to get him at home. They will get the out at home. Two outs now. He was going on contact, Justin. He was. So Pace will trade second and third for first and third. Torres will reach on the fielder's choice. Machine was out at home going on contact. And now Cigaro will come to the plate. He is one for two on the day. Reached on an infield hit. And came around to score. Julian Arrow Last inning. lost his balance. Ball hit his glove, and they were unable to make the play in Cigaro's last at bat. And that one misses outside and high. Pitch, 
Segaro, a scrappy ball player, playing second base for Pace. That one in for a strike. Might have been a little low. Segaro thinks it was a little low. The Pace fans thought it was a little low. Curveball, and that one's in for a strike. Count one and two to Segaro. Big swing and a miss at the changeup. He struck him out. That might have been the first changeup we've seen, Justin. That will do it. No runs. So Gulliver somehow escapes with duct tape and string and pick. Five innings, Spartans still up seven three. What, el what else did we say? Pixie dust, mirrors, flex seal, flex smoke, seal. flex seal, smoke. Yes. Another new pitcher, Justin. Yes, it is. New pitcher for the 14, it looks like. 14. Yep. Nick Praginos. So Nick Praginos. Praginos. So Nick, Nick Praginos. We'll get you the numbers on Praginos. 19 and two thirds innings pitched. 1-0 record, 4.27 ERA, 16 strikeouts against four walks, Justin. So guess what? <laughs> Probably going to keep the pace. Keep the pace for pace? Keep the pace that pace okay. is set. Now to the six, and Gulliver sends up number six, Jake Gorlick. It is an unbelievable pace that pace is setting in terms of the strikeout ratio, something that we've never seen. Not at a high school level, no. Well, you say not at high school. We saw, we saw it in AUBL Miami. We that did? Was, uh, that was actually two weeks ago. We saw Phil Roy do it for the Nationals while Michael Rudman and Phil Roy were going toe to toe in the center of the ring. Nationals and A's on South Florida Broadcast Network Channel 3. That one in for a strike. Fraginals pitching like his hair's on fire, gets on the mound and throws it quickly. Back on the mound and he's back in his windup just like that. That's a fastball in for a strike. He's moving quick, moving quick. He got him. Nice swinging strikeout. That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Jonathan Gonzalez. Still no. Jonathan Gonzalez. Still no, no plays in, in the field, field That's for correct. pace. Crazy. And the Raiders now down to the last five outs. They try to even up this game. Fraginals just picking up where every other pitcher has left off. He is the fifth pitcher. Hey. 
This pace pitching staff has been very impressive tonight. Five pitchers combining. And Justin, let's be honest, we don't know that it would have been more than one tonight had their starter, Jordani Carmona, not gotten injured on the second batter of the game. And, and Gulliver really took advantage of it, was able to score two Got runs. Him. Struck him out. Another one. <laughs> Gulliver was really able to take advantage of it and score two runs in the first inning. 18, Daniel McCullough. And really had the momentum in this game up through the second and the third inning. Pace had to scratch and claw their way back into this game. Yes, they did. But while all this was happening, Pace was <laughs> striking out the side every single inning. Up until the fifth. Through four innings, Pace had struck out the side. And even in the fifth inning, two of the three outs recorded were strikeouts, and the third one was on the bases. Well, now we're back to the top of the order with Daniel McAuliffe. The Raiders down to the last four outs to try to make up four runs. It's a tough hill. This is a tough hill to climb right now. On the ground. Chopper to are short. Are we going to see our first play? No, we are not. not. He will get in there. I think the coach must just be telling him to put the ball in play. <laughs> Easier said than done. Now moving number one, Alejandro Castro. 16 strikeouts on the night. Combined. Between Carmona, who faced one batter, struck him out. Albert Hernandez, Luis Gonzalez, Victor Medeiros, and Nick no. Frangelis. Five pitchers, and it might have, like I said, only been one had Carmona not gotten hurt. So Alejandro Castro now at the plate. But all the pace pitchers have had good pace on their fastball. And it's been a fast pace for pace. There's the curveball. This one is flared in the right field. And it's going to be, yes, we have the first <laughs> recorded out in the field. It goes F9. And that will do it. And more importantly, that'll do it. So the Raiders down to the last three outs. Pace will come up. Runs. Pace will come up in the sixth inning, and then it'll be Gulliver's last chance. They'll need four runs in three outs. And at Justin, least. when we do that math, at least, like you, yes, you're right. correct. And if pace does nothing Justin, here. when we do that math and you need more runs than you have outs to do it in, that could be a tough hill to climb. It usually is. We'll see if there's any difference here tonight. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Region Quarterfinal on HSBN Live. We are just having a ball here in the stands with the with the crowd here. It has been such a good time. We love playoff action here in high school baseball here in South Florida. New pitcher. Looks like number six, Jay. Jake Gorlick. It is Gorlick. We'll get you Gorlick stats. 20 and two thirds innings pitched. One and one record. 6.10 ERA, 17 strikeouts against nine walks. I'll tell you, Justin, this is a good young Gulliver team. We're gonna see some good things from Gulliver next year. They graduated some seniors, including their catcher from last season, who's now playing at the University of Miami. Gulliver, always a tough program. Leading off the sixth for the Spartans, number eight, Edison Renteria. So 
back to the top of the order for the Spartans. Edinson Renteria. He is one for one on the night with two walks and a single. I'm sure his father's around here somewhere. Edgar Renteria's brother, Edinson, senior. Jake's older brother, Bernard, plays in AUBL Miami. Gorlick, not the most common name you'll see. No, it is not. His brother, Bernard, plays in AUBL Miami. Nice breaking ball in on the outside part of the plate. Gulliver fans trying to root their team back into this game. Another good breaking ball. Ooh, and yep. missed somewhere. Yeah. Our perspective not as it usually is behind home plate, so we're at a bit of a disadvantage on pitches like that. A little harder to tell from an off-center position. Although we do have good seats. Let's, let's not get that wrong. We have very good seats. Nice curveball in for strike three. He struck him out. And that ball goes into left field. Now batting number seven, Sammy Infante. Sammy Infante. So that is the first out that Renteria has recorded tonight. He singled in the first, walked in the third, and walked again in the fourth. The one in the fourth was a UIBB, Justin. Well, Gorlick off to a good start on the plate. Oh, I'm sorry, on the mound. Fonte 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Gulliver hung tough in this game for the first three innings. That one is rocketed to right center. Is it going to stay in the ballpark? Yes, it, is. it will. Oh, barely makes the catch out there. That was a hard play out there. It was, but uh, Jake. Now, number 16, Robert no, that would have been Jake Gorlick, but <laughs> no, he, <absolutely, laughs> he was replaced. It, it, it could be anybody, right. but not Jake Gorlick. Correct. Because he, of course, pitched that ball. But so, two quick outs for Gorlick. Two outs in the inning. And here is Roberto Moya. Moya hit the second of the two run home runs. I think there's been an adrenaline dump here in the crowd, Justin. I think both sets of fans are just tired. Probably. It's, it's been a long one with the delay and everything. Big swing. We got him. It is 1040 at night. This game was supposed Did to start. No. One this, one. this game was supposed to start <laughs> at 7. It was. We got here at 4. So we've actually been here for... Three hours and 40 minutes, excuse me, uh, six hours and 40 minutes already. You know, you wonder the injury by Carmona if it might have been from warming up and warming up again after an hour of a rain delay. It's quite possible. Well, we know for sure it's not a situation like what we see in college basketball where players are sitting instead of playing. We know these guys want <laughs> to be here. Just missed. Just missed. <laughs> this is a great chance for these high schoolers and in some cases seniors to get their 
final taste of playoff action. Districts, regionals, states popped up. Plenty of time to settle under it, and he does, and that will do it. So a quick inning for Gorlick, but Gulliver still trails seven to three. You are watching the 2019 FHSAA Baseball Regional Quarterfinal on HSBN Live. We head to the top of the seventh and what may be the final inning. Gulliver trailing seven to three. So this is it, Jay. Final three outs here for the Raiders. And they got to come up with four runs to keep this game going. And Luis Aparicio will lead it off here in the top of the seventh. in for a strike. Aparicio has been Gulliver's best hitter by far this season. Oh, and two the count on Aparicio. And he dribbles that towards again. third. He's going to be a hard play again. He's there. Aparicio has been a terror tonight. He has been <laughs> on base every time he's been up. And exactly what Gulliver needed. He was hit by a pitch in the first, reached on an error in the third, reached on an error in the fourth, and now gets a... We have a change at bat here, Jay. As Cole Macau has come in for Noah Fry. Makes you wonder why you would replace your cleanup hitter. It's a good question, but that's what we got. You wonder why Cole McCall was not in this game. He's 333 this season with one home run. One of only the four home runs. And his yeah. hand in the right field for a base hit. Makes you wonder where Cole McCall has been this game. Well, he's on first now. And that'll move Aparicio over to second. So. <laughs> yes, he is. And this will be Jake Santos at the plate. Now batting number 19, Jake Santos. So the tying run in the on deck circle go. now. And Jake Santos, who also, Justin, has been on base every single time he has been up tonight. Yes, he has. Singled in the first, walked in the third, walked in the fifth. Fastball just missed. Good velocity on that fastball. <laughs> Plan and drive. Let's go. the fifth pitcher of the night for Case. That's a good Same for a strike. <laughs> he is 
flying. On drip. So Gulliver down seven to three. No out. Top of the seventh inning. Have two runners on. That's in the dirt. They're going to both advance. And Justin, I guarantee you, there will be no UIBB here. Usually, we will start talking about the UIBB with runners at second third. I guarantee you, you will not see it here. Okay. Because why on earth would you put the tying run at the plate? You would not. Is the answer I was looking for. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was rhetorical, but... Yeah, it was, but... I still hope you would answer my <laughs> Now I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I can see why you're confused on that. <laughs> Santos fouls that off down the first baseline. Cannot afford any wild pitches here. What a situation. He did not. He did not go. And you're not going to get the second base umpire to overrule it either because there's no umpire at first base. So there's no, there's drip. no overruling. Don't drift. Man, let's drive. Let's go. Leave your head on it. What a situation here. Yeah. And now I'm hit hard. But it's a right center field. Gonna score a run. It will Here's tag one up. Oh, look <clears> at this. Throw. It's going to go way Wow. Up. Nice back of up there. Nice, nice backing up from Fragiles. If he was not there, it would have been much worse. So it is now seven to four. What? Both runners advance. And even though that runner at third is less than two outs, number 24, Will They're still going, Gulliver is still going to need another. Base runner. Oh, William Betridge. Come on, Will. Come on, Will. Try to keep this going for the Raiders. As they now have one on and one out here in the top of the seventh. No, 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 no. He went. He went. He couldn't he couldn't hold up on that. No. From this from the angle I have, I saw the bat. Amazing. We're sitting literally a foot away from each other. That's right. And we saw it completely different. Because I'm more on an angle. I saw that bat come over the plate. But it has to pass home plate. Yeah, I'm not sure it passed. You folks at home won't see right now. But if the plate is here, you have to go all the way past Yeah, I don't know that it went past. And hit hard to center field. And this one's going to score a run. It will. So it's now seven to five. But <laughs> there's not two up. All right. Well, it's going to come down to uh, D'Angelo Ortiz. Little Poppy. <laughs> Little Poppy. <laughs> number 27, D'Angelo Ortiz. We were told before this game that this is Big Poppy's son. Oh, yeah? Okay. I don't know if that is true or not, but we were told that. I'm going to go with no. But if he wants to go by Little Poppy, we'll call him whatever he wants. Well, I figure either way, it's not a bad name to call someone. Even if it's a mistake. Tommy Hunt is still in the on-deck circle here. So nothing has changed for Gulliver, but now there are two outs. Score is 7 to 5. Who would have thought that we would be in a 7 to 5 game here tonight? Justin, we had fans coming up to us before the game wondering how this game's even happening tonight. <laughs> it, it looked very disproportionate, I guess you would say, on paper. And that one hits a right field. That's going to get down for a hit. A nice hit. Gulliver! Now has the time right <laughs> at the plate. Are you serious? Are you serious? Wondering. Here is Gorlick, the, the pitcher. pitcher. For Gulliver. Gorlick tonight was hit by a pitch in the second inning, right in the middle of his bat, right on the six. Go, 
So one on, two out in the top of the seventh. It's really Gorlick's run is the only one that matters here. The, the runner at first, Ortiz, his run does not matter. Big swing from Gorlick. A free swing at that one, but unfortunately, the bottom dropped out of that curveball. A nice looking pitch from Fraginal. It's left up high. One and two to count. Tried to make him chase the high heat there. Big swing and a miss. He's I'll do it. That will do it. Pace hangs on. Our final score here, the Montego Pace Spartans, seven. <laughs> And the Gover Rangers five. Thank you wow. for coming out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. What a game. Support both these teams. <laughs> Ask you to drive home safely. Enjoy the rest of your evening. center them. We gotta get me in the uh, center. Well we gotta get off the camera yeah, first yeah. of all. Okay.
Okay, folks, Jay Hayback about to have an interview. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the HSBN Live postgame show. I am here with a, a very happy and relieved bunch of Pace players and coaches here as uh, head coach Tom Duffin will we'll start with you tonight. It was a very interesting game, and it was a, a tale of two or three different types of games tonight. It all started with your starting pitcher, your Danny Carmona. Let's start there and, and talk about that because that started to be the story of, of the game as we started. Carmona struck out the first player he faced and then left the game. Why don't you tell the fans because we on the air did not know what the story was with your Danny Carmona. Well, three weeks ago, your Donny uh, was throwing against a district opponent and he pulled a hamstring. And how severe it was as the, as the weeks went on, we found out it was a little more than just a little tweak. So with that being said, we kept him out for the last three weeks. We got the all clear from the clear from the parents, from everybody. And as you saw tonight, he's he's not ready. So the reason why you saw what we did in the, in the pitching to make sure that we had all the pitchers under the count so they could come back in the next Saturday's game. Because when you lose your number one, you know, it's it's Johnny Holt. Yeah, in, in this type of ball game here, you know, anything. You can throw all the records out the window. You know, you give Gulliver a great amount of credit for them fighting. But I, I'm very proud of our guys staying focused and battling back and getting the runs when we when we really needed to have them. Were you aware as the game progressed and you put in a second pitch or a third, a fourth, and a fifth that all of the outs that were recorded were <laughs> recorded via the strikeout up until and through the fifth inning? It was it was quite a it was something we had never seen before here and your pitchers really dominated the game tonight even without Carmona the rest of your staff really filled in admirably. Well, I mean, as as good a pitcher as Giordani is, and you can't take anything away, but I have a lot. Of, you know, if it's not Giordani, it's going to be Luis Gonzalez or Albert Hernandez or Nick Fragino. It's all tonight. You know, so um, every time we go out there, that. Is, we're going to go ahead and we're going to at least compete. You know, they, they battle and they stay in the zone and they, they're they pretty darn good pitchers. And in the first inning, Gulliver took advantage of Yordani coming out of the game. And, you know, poor poor Albert comes in from center field after warming up to, to play center field and now is told after a few pitches, oh, by the way, I have to come pitch in this one-and-done playoff game. Let's shift over to Albert for, for just a moment, and we've got Albert here with us. Albert, must have been very tough to come in that way, to come in in the first inning after only a few pitches are thrown. You haven't warmed up to pitch, obviously. You warmed up to play center field. Give us an idea first, before we get to the rest of the fun stuff, let us, let us know what it was like, you know, maybe some butterflies, maybe a little bit of not being warmed up of those first couple of I mean, I wouldn't really say it was butterflies, but it was more of like, okay, I need to get the job done for my team because they've carried me throughout the year. I give it all I got, and if I come successful, then good for us. So you came in, and, and the first couple pitches, you, you hit a bat, you walked a batter, you hit a batter, and things were not going as you had anticipated. And then you were able to, to get your control and get the outs in that first inning. Were you feeling a little bit better at that point? After the first inning, the confidence did settle in. I I felt less stress on my back, so after that first inning, I kind of did cruise a little bit until I finished pitching. So let's turn the page. We get to the second inning, excuse me, to the bottom of the With one runner on, you hit an absolute bomb into left center field that went to the night sky and had whatever launch angle is the proper launch angle that we're seeing in Major League Baseball today. What were you thinking at that point? Because I know being down to nothing, you probably were pressing a little bit. What were you thinking after the home run? After the home run, I was kind of relieved, but I wouldn't say it was pressed when I went up to bat because I had been comfortable at the plate for most of the year, so I just had to get the job done for my team. Tremendous game for you, Albert, and um, you are our HSBN Live player of the game tonight, so we want to congratulate you from HSBN Live, and We'll, uh, we'll turn our attention, Coach Stuff, and to, uh, to the other players you brought with us tonight and give them some, some love and attention. So, so let's move to, to Mr. Moya, who also had a two-run home run of his own. Your, yours was hit about as far, if not further, than Hernandez. Give us an idea of what you were looking for on that pitch and 
what that at bat was like for you. Um, I got two strikes on me. Uh, the second strike was a bad call, and I was just trying to get it there back into play, say have a good approach, stay short to the ball, and carry my team on the board. Were you thinking home run when that pitch came in? Were you thinking on your mind, I'm going to let loose on this one? To be honest, I was thinking about hitting the ball as hard as I can right there at that spot to get my team on the board. Well, you knew it, and we all knew it, as soon as the ball was hit, because as soon as that ball was hit, you could hear the fans, and you could hear everybody in the stadium. So we all knew that that ball was gone, and we want to congratulate you for a great, great game tonight. And we'll move on to Mr. Fraginals, who, uh, who came in to close tonight in uh, what was a, a five-pitcher performance for Pace tonight, and uh, none were more. No innings were more important than the final innings that you came in to to pitch. Um, give us an idea of what you were thinking and the pressure that was in that situation, knowing this is a one and done tonight. Yeah, I man. I mean, to be honest, like I didn't feel any pressure because I know the guys behind me. They can play defense, and if I just put the ball in play, if they just put the ball in play, they can get the outs. All the pitchers tonight were throwing very hard and getting a lot of strikeouts tonight. Was that something you were thinking about coming in, seeing all the strikeouts, that, that you wanted to get in on that action? Yeah, man, I, I, was, I was hungry for that, man. But mostly, I just wanted to get the ball in play and just get the outs. Well, you, you did exactly that. And, and the pitching tonight for, for Pace was spectacular. And, you know, we'll bring Coach Duffin back in. Coach, you've, you've got a, a challenge ahead of you now. You know, your team has a challenge ahead. And uh, we'll be face, you'll, you'll be facing the winner of Key West versus I Modder. You know, give us an idea of what you're looking for out of that matchup. From what I just heard, we're, we're going to be facing Key West, down at Key West. So all you have to do is go back to the history books and see the rivalry between Key West and, and Pace High School. It goes back to before I even was in school here. So there's going to be no shortage of uh, love lost you know, between the, the fans and, and the schools. And it's going to be a very competitive game. So at this point, you just try to survive in advance. You know, you, you, you're, we're all banged up at this time of the year. So whatever it takes to win, you just got to roll it out there and give forth your effort. There's no tomorrow. It'll be quite the road trip, probably the longest road trip that anyone will have to face here in, in the uh, regional semifinals. But, uh, Coach Duffin, we want to congratulate you on behalf of HSBN Live for a great, a great gritty win here tonight. And uh, congratulations to, to Monsignor Pace for a well-played, great game victory here tonight, a hard-played game over Gulliver. The final score, 7-5. to five. You have been watching HSBN Live for myself, Jay Habacht, my broadcast partner, Justin Bresner, and for our producer tonight, Jacob Noah. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time on HSBN Live. I'm Gifting Gope, Major League Baseball player. Please support international baseball by subscribing to CBO TV.